that match today played between Sargisian Gabriel from Armenia versus Fabiano Caruana, United States. And if you see on the board, there is one move that is going to defeat Fabiana Caruana. And today, in this video, we are going to analyze from the beginner's chess point of view that what are the openings that have been played and what is the move that made Fabiana Caruana lose against Gabriel Sargis in Armenia today played in FIDE Chess Olympia 2022. So let us quickly move to the game and till then you find out the move that is winning here. One move and winning, completely winning from here. And one move played by Sargisian Gabriel and that is winning and that we will start today and let us start. So here Fabiana Caruana is playing with the white pieces and Gabriel Sargisian from Armenia is playing with the black pieces and Armenia is in top form and they are playing absolutely a stunning in this tournament. They are the top notch and one of the great grandmaster Fabiana Caruana is playing against a very very fine Sargisian Gabriel and what move they played. How this game can be a role model game for you and how can you prepare your games from these games. That is what we are going to analyze today and at this stage Sargis Gabriel playing with the white pieces starts with d4. So this is a queen's pawn game and Fabiana Caruana is playing with the black pieces and he replies with knight f6. So let us see first from the beginner's point of view if you are watching this game how this game can be helpful to you. This game can be helpful to you because you need to prepare the opening repertoire and once you prepare the opening repertoire you can do better. So if d4 is played, most of the times we see in this uh, Olympiad and in the earlier Olympiads and in the World Championships, the federated player 2783 Fabiana Caruana opts for knight f6. And Gabriel has opted for queen's pawn game that is d4. And this is a very very robust opening and you need to prepare it. And then immediately after the Indian, this is called Indian defense. This setup is called Indian defense. He plays c4. So d4, c4, this is Queen's Gambit setup, but currently since there is no pawn at d5, so this is not a gambit, it is a normal variation that is being played in the Indian defense system. And now immediately he plays e6. So e6 is in played and it means that he is looking for the Nimzo Indian defense. If you go to knight c3, in that case, see I will say show you if you go here and if he comes here, this opening is called Nimzo Indian defense. So you need to understand the names of the opening that will help you in preparing your games if you are a federated player say 1200 to 2000 or up to 2400 this video is very very helpful for you. It is designed to help you understand the basic concepts that is involved in the opening and this will help you. So right now this can be a Nimzo Indian but what Gabriel played he went for knight to so is e c4 played e6 played and now he goes for knight f3 so this opening is called what is this opening called this opening is called nimzo indian defense so nimzo indian defense is going on right now and, uh, and this is anti Nimzo Indian. Why it is anti Nimzo Indian? Because you have not allowed the bishop to come over here by playing knight c3. Instead of that, you have played knight to f3. And this opening is a very, very strong. And these days it is being used by many of the grandmasters. So if you are watching this video, you should put it in your deck library that anti Nimzo Indian is a very good way to go against the Indian defenses. If knight to f6 and e6 has been played and you have played d4 c4 the third move you can try knight to f3 playing anti nimzo indian and now he goes for b6 so this is this opening is e1 2 
uh, written in the encyclopedia of chess opening this opening is queen's indian defense looking to fiancha to the bishop and it looks like that the, this game will go into the fiancha to setup and in that way he goes for Queen's Indian defense, fiancha to variation. The moment black plays this, white goes for fiancha to variation so that both the bishops are on the a strong long diagonal and both are eyeing to each other. And so uh, lots of comments coming here right now. Arsh is commenting. Hello. Yes. Hello, Arsh. How are you? Hope you are doing well. And so we are going to see a very, very strong opening today being played between the FIA, uh, federated player 2698, Sergei C. Gabriel from a very strong team. And Armenia is doing so well against the Fabiana Karwan of United States. And the game is going on. And right now we are witnessing anti Nimzo Indian defense that has been played. And then Queen's Indian defense, Fian Chateau variation is about to happen. And let us see, it's, he has played bishop to a6. It's good to attack this pawn. And in some way, you would like to exchange your light square bishop with the dark square bishop. And in this way, it goes on. So right now, the game is going on. And... There is some uh, variations going on and this is useful for those viewers who are uh, federated between 1200 to 2000 so that they can build up their opening return repertoire. What systematic chess is doing? Systematic chess is actually preparing you to improve your game by capturing openings being played by the highest level, the grandmasters that they are using to play. That is what we are guiding you so that this can be helpful to you so let us start from the beginning so that you don't forget what has happened in the game so d4 queen's pound game knight f6 this is called indian defense and then c4 e6 knight f3 because he don't want the bishop to come and win this knight he don't want to allow him nimzo india and that's why it is called anti nimzo india then b6, g3, and the moment black goes for g3, the best move here that you can opt for, like Gabriel has opted here, the Yan Chaku Williams has opted, wins in that defense. And then, right now, the game is going on, and let us go b3, b sub, b4, check. So this is a very very sharp line played by Fabiano but that's not a very very uh, well accepted line but this is the main line theory of the Fianchu to variation and when black opts to check the king it is called check variation and then you defend Gabriel defends by the bishop and then bishop e7 he has to retreat back because he is not in a mood to exchange the bishop so when you are not in a mood to exchange the bishop what you have to do we have to retreat or safeguard our pieces because at this stage we don't want to exchange. Fabiano is afraid of exchanging at this stage and the opening that is going on is anti nimzo Indian defense. So this is anti nimzo Indian setup and now development has to be done. So what do you mean by development in chess? So when you are playing what you have to do is you have to look to control the center number one number two you have to develop the minor pieces number three you should look for castling if your queen king is in the middle of the board you may get into a trouble very early but there are some openings there are some variations for example french defense where it is difficult for black to castle and sometimes without castling also you get into a very very strong uh, position but from fundamental principles you have to first try to control the center so d4 or e4 you can opt and d4 is being played largely there is a video that we have uh, done from systematic chess that how you can improve your opening by d4 and there we have covered near about 10 openings that can help you so you must go there and watch it in the playlist of openings d4 don't forget that playlist you have to watch 
now he goes for knight c3 idea and d5 so this is typically this pawn structure that currently you see on the board is played more than uh, 60 70 percent of the time and you need to hold the pawns that is very important that you should keep an eye on the pawns because you need not uh, just uh, do some moves that uh, destruct your pawn structure you should avoid doubling of the pawns and you should develop in such a way that at early stage you don't get your pawns doubled so now at this stage theoretically it is better and it is advised from white's perspective that he goes for the exchange variation so oh yes and gabriel who is looking very strong in this tournament that is 44 chase olympia 2022 goes for the exchange variation and we are learning from his game and then Fabiano also exchange it. He, it is not preferable to capture by the knight. It's preferable to capture by the e pawn, and he does that. And now bishop g2, castles, castles. So uh, we are at move number ten, and both the teams are appearing to be very well. They are very so. Hello, uh, Ishrat Khasmi from Mumbai is there, and she is writing hello. Yes, hello. How are you? Hope you all are doing good and you are learning good chess from our videos and it is helping you. So don't forget to subscribe Systematic Chess. If you have not subscribed yet, we are a very small YouTube channel. We are growing and we are here to help you grow your chess and in return what you have to do, you have to like our videos share our videos and subscribe our videos and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss this type of uh, coverage that is primarily focused for beginners who are doing who are learning chess and who are playing on leeches chess.com at a rating of near about 1200 yellow to 2000 yellow and now rook to e8 95 so this move is a very very strong move by gabriel if you are able to mount your knight at an outpost like this nothing good like that and fabiana caruana playing with black pieces from united states is uh, has opted some moves that has cost him because he first went here and then he has returned so he has lost a tempo his bishop here is actually at a very very good square but not doing much great over there and it seems that there is slight advantage from the white's perspective and computer is saying white is at an advantage of 0.2 not very big advantage because fabiano from united states is a very very strong player and he is doing very well in the tournament and so is the sargisian gabriel a very strong grandmaster 2698 from armenia and the armenia team is right now at the top and he is doing very well in the match in the tournament and for himself also and these two grandmasters are playing today anti nimzo indian that what we are witnessing and those who have come slightly late let me revise that what opening it is going on and so that we don't forget it next time if someone plays against us we should be aware d4 this is called wins palm game knight f6 indian defense c4 gaining a space a good move e3 planning e6 planning for nimzo indian he goes for knight f3 and that is anti nimzo indian fianchato try to fianchato his bishop immediately white tries to fianchato he goes at a3 looking to control a very very active diagonal but is that going to help us we will see that b3 he defends his pawn because this pawn was in the attack and then bishop b4 check and this is fianchato variation of queen's indian defense check variation and this is then he defends with the bishop and here there is a loss of tempo he has moved, moved a single piece twice in the development stage and then knight to c3 d5 this pawn structure i told you very strong and in this white goes for exchange variation and so does Grandmaster Sergisian Gabriel and so does Caruana Fabiano exchange variation have done Bishop G2 developing the Bishop castles castles and then Rook to E8 95 and this is a very very strong point because you have a, a Knight at E5 on an outpost supported by a pawn is very very strong and then he goes back and so this is completely this setup you don't forget 
This setup is Caruana Fabuana versus Sargasin Gabriel at the 44th Chess Olympiad, and this is called Queen's Indian Defense Fian Chato variation. Primarily, first the check was given and retreated, and this is completely theoretical. And such moves have been played in the past 83% times this uh, position of the board has arrived. And now, rook to c1. Knight bd7, a very good move. In this move, you look for knight to here so that you can go here and you can defend your h7 pawn because it ultimate target in the queen's gambit setup is to look for this h7 pawn. So now he is going for rook c2, knight f8, and so the theory is being played. Bishop c1, so this is a move that has been played earlier by many great players uh, but not at very higher rated player but near about Chapra new I played against Mareko S and Blue Bond against Mexico and Guinea has played against Surasco so this is a very a stunning and that it seems that Gabriel is highly prepared and you should be prepared while playing against your opponent and then Knight to E6 so this maneuvering is very important. You should learn to maneuver your pieces. So see how he has brought his knight over a very very strong location. It, it is safeguarding so many good squares and attacking the pawn. If somewhere he moves and then there is a likely chance that he can attack. So in the Grandmasters games what we have there to learn is the maneuvering of the pieces. And that is very important. So these stages of the knight you need to remember that you can maneuver this knight. You could have come here. But then it is very difficult to go over here. So it was better he go for here than here. And then in this stage he could have come here. He could have come here. And he is, could have defended it h7 pawn. But since this bishop is not eyeing on this diagonal. Neither the queen is over here. So he thought to develop his piece at this level so maneuvering of the knight is very important and from this he is eyeing on this pawn might be he could prepare to play very quickly this move and this is a preparation to control the center so ultimately in the opening stage you have to make the calculation in such a way that you have a control and fabiana Caruana, very very strong player appears to be very very prepared and so he goes for the bishop to be to a6 and then e3 has been played defending his pawn and it's a good move and normal development is gonna b sub d6 questioning the knight and now he started maneuvering his knight he looks appears to go here and that's why he is maneuvering and then he goes for a5 so a5 has been played he maybe he wants to mount his bishop back again over there and then he stops his further movement he don't want the insertion of your enemy pieces inside your camp so level rank 4 is the 4 and 5 uh, right now Gabriel one piece is into the Fabiano camp and Fabiano has two knights at a very very strong setup let us see what's going to happen and c5 has been played this is the move what he prepared for with the maneuvering of the knight and that's how this is this is going to be a very very critical at this stage let us see what is going to happen so much tension in the center and which piece is going to do what it's very difficult and uh, let us see what going to happen so knight to f so he maneuvered his knight to go over here and now he is attacking this knight which is defending this pawn so that's the uh, very strong move by gabriel and he tries to if he captures it he will capture this knight and then he will capture this pawn by the bishop maybe and then he will be at a very very strong position so this knight maneuvering in the middle game is the key that is what you need to learn that how you need to calculate so that you keep controlling the center and don't lose your central pawn if you lose your central pawn half of the game is over over there so before making a move you make a checklist that you must check the number of attacks on the central pawn and number of defenders on the central pawn so let's see aman hi hello how are you so aman is there 
and hope you are uh, learning uh, chess a lot and uh, uh, aman hope you are doing well in your studies and uh, simultaneously you are learning chess well uh, you are watching fide chess olympiad and you are preparing your opening repertoire and if you want a particular opening repertoire to be covered by systematic chess let us know we will cover that opening and now right now those who have come late let me tell you sargisian gabriel from armenia federated 2698 playing against a very strong grandmaster caruana fabuano which is world number three right now just after alirizia ferozia and magnus carlson and Gabriel has a chance here. He has created the middle game very strong. And let us see what happens here. And now he captures. So why he captured it? Because he did not want it to get captured. Because if he get got captured, it would have been not got moved. Now the question to my viewers is, how you are going to capture this knight? Whether you are going to capture from this pawn or you are going to capture from this pawn. So this is the question. You have two pawns which can capture the knight and such confusions must happen in your games also and you have to be careful. So what if you capture from the E pawn? What will happen? If you capture from the E pawn, this rook which is uh, on the E file will be very very strong and you need to fight for the E file. But if you capture from the G file, what will happen? These squares will become weak. If this square becomes weak, the opponent piece can come and sit over here. So whenever you move a pawn, you have to be careful what is getting weak and what is not getting weak. And if you capture with this side, this might get weak for a while, but simultaneously it is being covered by two pieces. So this way you can choose that in theoretically it is told that you have to capture towards the center towards the center you should capture but depending upon the safety of your king safety of the king first we teach our students that you have to look for safety of the king and so we have here a player Arshaktar he is uh, saying you should play g4 uh, g4 is not the right move you should not capture by the g side uh, here it is advisable to capture by the e pawn and let me explain it why because if you capture by this pawn this square is not you are losing control moreover you are gaining control on your knight even if you capture by this also it will happen but right now this square will become weak if you capture with the g pawn and simultaneously this bishop will be vulnerable on this file your king will get open so let us see what Gabriel did Gabriel captures from the e side bishop a6 attacking the rook immediately holding the capture and now the fight for the e file the open file has started so now whenever there is an open file you have to look so this knight is mounted over here this pawn cannot come immediately because you have to move the knight first somewhere and then only this can be moved and when you capture it back the doubling of the pawn will go and so this is a very very strong move by gabriel and here the computer gives him an advantage of 0.2 and now rook c8 now he is looking to move this pawn and so fabiano is having three pieces and three monsters are sitting over there queen has not moved yet of the both side so we are learning from the games of the grandmasters that don't move your queen very early i have seen many 1800 and below rated players that they usually play with the queen why to play with the good pieces play with your weaker pieces in the early game try to uh, make deficiencies your in your opponent camp and very important that you should know how to uh, count the deficiencies that like what are the deficiencies in opponent camps so now let us see what Gabriel is going to move so what is the good move right now so Gabriel goes for rook to g4 
and when Gabriel has gone for g4, so this was the move that our viewer Mr. Arsh was saying that g4 is to be played and I am so glad the viewers know everything but you have to find it when you are playing in your own game and that you can do and so those who have not subscribed yet, please subscribe so that you don't forget the notice and remember that you don't miss the game uh, notification you need to hit the notification bell because if you don't hit the notification bell you will not get the notification of the live lectures which are primarily designed to help the juniors who are federated less than 1800 playing on leeches chess.com or who have played their whole life and they have not played with systems that is what systematic chess has been made for that we want to Tell the world that you, the systems in the chess that are played by the grandmasters are well documented and many of the players play theoretically first and then a new game happens and so right now when G4 has been played, there, the right now uh, this game is becomes new when the moment the G4 has been played, such game does not exist, it's all together a new problem and we have to find out what Caruana Fabiano, a very strong grandmaster, federated 2783 from United States, how they face Sargis and Gabriel from Armenia and Armenia is really winning in this game. In this tournament, they have been showing very strong commitment and very, very active play by Gabriel. And now he captures towards the center. And now see, once a capture has been happened, you have to look on the entire board. The beginners who are watching this game, look, now this rook and this rook are facing each other. Some exchange has to happen. This bishop is sitting on a very strong diagonal. So right now, Fabiano Caruana and Sergesian Gabriel both are at equal position. Some moves, some inaccuracies, some miscalculations may get your game to a bad shape and you may lose. Uh, despite winning, you may lose. Uh, uh, may end up losing. So let us see what happens. So what will you do in this situation? Will you capture the rook? Will you not capture the rook? So what Gabriel does, he captures the rook and queen captures at c8 and then he captures the pawn. So some simplifications goes on and usually it's better to simplify as soon as possible. It's better, it's always better to simplify. Whenever you are playing, look for simplification. Simple moves are the best moves in chess. Usually we don't see while we are playing, but we have to develop ourselves in such a way that our fundamentals don't get disturbed. And fundamentals are, first you have to try to control the center, then you have to do the calculations in the middle game, keep your king safe, and then look for the pawn that you can make into a pass pawn, and that pass pawn usually wins. So my question to our viewers is, Pass pawn is very very important and this game is a classical example how Gabriel Sargisian made two pass pawns which ended up costed Fabiana Caruana losing this match and today this game was happening. Today I was watching it live and it happened for near about three to four hours and we are analyzing it in such a way that the beginners who are learning for the chess they can learn from this. And now B sub to B4. Rook e3, looking for some breakthrough, maybe this side or this side, or he's just safeguarding it. And now the knight is coming over here. So one knight here, one knight here, almost equal position. Two bishops, two bishops. In the queen side, two pawns, two pawns. His queen is sitting on a very strong diagonal. His queen is safeguarding that. And this queen is doing a good job it's real nearly overloaded right now you have to look for the overloaded pieces while making a plan in the middle game move number 26 bishops goes back and this is slight inaccuracy as per computers g5 queen to f5 was a better move but he did not play g5 he opted for bishop b2 he wants to come back keep an eye on this square and at a very very active scale so he don't want the queen to come here so he's holding this square and preparing to activate his queen because he has not moved his queen yet gabriel has not moved his queen and fabiano has moved it while capturing the rook bishop b7 
activating the bishop now again on the fianchato diagonal and this diagonal is under the fight of these two bishops and let us see what happens h3 safeguarding this pawn and then f6 attacking the knight and knight now knight has to move and now knight retreats back to its position so sometimes you don't think that if you have gone ahead you don't come back you can come back you have to take back your pieces and then again re-prepare, re, re over because right now it seems that this is going to be another outpost and it is going to be a very effective. Queen to c7, f5 is played. Now this pawn structure is getting very robust and now he comes here attacking, taking a very strong position. Maybe he's pinning his knight move somewhere. It's going to be a check, a very nasty check. He comes back. His Rook has been attacked but it was saved but he moves it back and now bishop to c5, bishop c5, rook to d8. So now shift of attack is happening and Gabriel is looking holding the positions very strong. Fabiana is not getting any breakthrough and now he goes for bishop capture c5 and now pawn capture. So now this pawn has been dissociated. So see this move is a good move. He got an offer and he captured it because he has dissociated the pawns and connected pawns are strong pawns. Dissociated pawns are not strong pawns. He captures it, he captures it. Queen e1, h5. And this is not a good move. I think this is the move that Fabiano has cost this match. This move cost him because best move was queen to c7 and the follow-up was knight to d2 h6 knight capture c4 d capture c4 bishop capture c4 rook d4 and then bishop captures b7 queen captures b7 rook e7 queen f3 rook e3 queen d5 and then king h2 so this was the move that could have happened and almost there will have ended up in a very good position but this was not played h5 hasn't played and whenever you play h5 you i told you you create deficiencies this was controlling this very important square and deficiencies have been uh, created and now let us see how he exploits the deficiency immediately he captures the pawn so a loose pawn was there and this he have given up and this inaccuracy was not good he captures it however this is also an inaccuracy at this stage knight h4 was the best move mounting this on a very strong outpost but he went for the pawn and now rook 8 he is trying to get some breakthrough but servicing gabriel pieces are placed at a very very strong positions and holding the position very well now he goes for knight h4 looking for that outpost he attacks the queen and queens come back to the home he goes back preparing to push his pawns and now knight goes on the outpost and here white Sebastian Gabriel as an advantage of 2.3, 2.8 and the advantage is growing. C4, capture C4, queen capture C4 and then now his advantage is mounting, attacking the bishop. Bishop, he safeguards his bishop and now knight to e7 check. He goes for, king goes to h7. He captures the knight, simplifying, simplifying, attacking the queen on the base of this uh, queen and now he goes captures the bishop queen captures the knight so simplification is going on and now a very strong move he captures the central pawn and now he has one very strong pass pawn which may queen up or end up into a new piece and that pass pawn is very strong and at this stage Sergei and Gabriel has been able to win the queen side as he is having a very strong pass pawn and both have two uh, one queen, one queen, one rook, one queen, and here three pawns against four pawns. So the computer is giving plus three advantage of service in Gabriel from Armenia, playing very strong chess. Goes for a check, he saves his king. Rook d8, attacking the queen. Queen moves in the file. He captures now on the h side. G captures h5. He goes, this is not a good move. And now he attacks the queen 
queen goes there and now he look for a check he's looking to get a breakthrough move number 50 is going on so much of tension is there and the game is going on king to h2 queen c2 queen g6 check he safeguards his king and now he plays a magnificent goal he comes back he increases his defense for this pawn <coughs> but is that sorry is that going to help him queen f4 looking to get inside the camp get some breakthrough he comes up safeguarding his square the king activating his king and now this is a very very strong move he goes back he pushes his pawn and h6 has been played and this is also getting very very close if he is not able to capture it he it will be a mate if he captures it it will be a mate he cannot capture it this is a very strong move so there is no alternative to it and what he has to do he just goes for a g5 has been played and he thinks that he has mounted it very strong but our viewer someone is suggesting yam percent in percent yes it m percent you can capture this pawn which is played twice and that is called m percent in chess that is allowed if a pawn moves two squares and you have a pawn defending that square you if you want you can capture it and he captures it two connected pass pawns one pass pawn here and 11.8 almost the value of a queen is the advantage of Gabriel the player from Armenia appears to defeat Caruana Fabiana world number three he captures the pawn and then a stunning move from where I started this video and that stunning move if you have already found it it's rook to g7 and now there is no way to defend and at this stage Fabiana Caruana resigned because if he captures it he will capture for a check and if he captures it he will go for an exchange exchange is inevitable and if he does not capture it suppose if he uh, captures by the rook he captures it he goes here then a check from here now you have to capture it otherwise it will be a mate if you go here he will come here and match so he captures it and now there is a force exchange of the queens at this stage and if you exchange the queen see what will happen if you exchange you are getting two pass connected pawns and this pawn is going to queen and that's why Fabiana Caruana resigned here and what a wonderful match at Chennai and what so many learnings in these 61 moves and hope this video has been helpful to you and if it is helpful to you hey don't forget to subscribe like the video and most important don't forget to hit the bell button and share these videos if you have liked it thank you <coughs> thank you so much